Hello everyone and welcome to C++ Tutorials. In this tutorial we explain the basics of dynamic arrays in C++. Here is a brief overview of what you will learn in this tutorial. First of all, we will explain the need for dynamic arrays. Then we will explain how to create and use dynamic arrays. And finally, we will explain a simple code that demonstrates how to use dynamic arrays. Here is a C++ program that demonstrates how to use dynamic arrays and you will learn how to write this code in this video tutorial. Okay, let's start. First, let's explain the need for dynamic arrays. We declare the classical arrays like this. This statement will declare an array of an integers and the size of this array will be 10. Here, it's very important to keep in mind that the array size is fixed when the array is created. That is, the memory space for the array is allocated and fixed at the compile time. The array is allocated on the stack. The memory for variables on the stack is automatically created and deallocated. However, in a number of scenarios, the array size is not known in advance. The solution for this would be to declare very large arrays, such as this one for example. However, the issue with this approach is that memory will be wasted if we use only a small portion of the allocated memory space for this array. The solution for this problem is to use dynamic arrays. The dynamic arrays are created during the program execution, that is at the runtime or during the execution time. That is, the size and the allocated memory space of dynamic arrays are determined during the program execution. Often, a user is asked for the size of the array and on the basis of the provided size, the array is created at the program runtime. The dynamic arrays can also be deleted during the runtime. How to create and use dynamic arrays? We can define dynamic arrays as arrays which are created during the program execution. They are created by using the operator called new. We create them like this. First of all, we need to create a pointer. And then we need to write p is equal to new int 10. This statement involving new will allocate or reserve 10 memory locations for our array and it will return an address to the first memory location of the created array. And this is very, very important to understand. That is, it will return the base address of the first element of the array. The memory locations and variables of the array are created next to one another. The memory location returned by new is stored in the pointer p. Note that the number 10 over here is fixed, however, we can easily write a program where a user will specify the size of the array at the runtime of the program. And here is a small sketch that illustrates the application and the usage of new. Here is what's happening behind the scenes. First of all, we create a pointer to an integer. Then, when we type p is equal to new int, 3, this is what will happen. Memory space is allocated for the array and here is the memory space. It's represented by this shade region. Once we execute new int 3, an address of the first entry or the element of the array is stored in P. And now P points to this first entry or the first byte that stores the first entry. And over here we can see three entries, first entry, second entry, and the third entry. Note over here that every entry is occupying four bytes. This is because integers are occupying four bytes. That is, we use four bytes to store integers. And this sketch is very important, so spend some time studying it. 
we can use the created pointer p to access and change the array elements. So for example, if we want to assign a value to the first array element, we will simply type p of 0 is equal to 1, and to the second element in the array, we can simply assign 5 like this. Or we can use the pointer arithmetic. For example, we can write star p is equal to 1, and this is equivalent to p of 0 is equal to 1, then we can increment p. Now p is pointing to p of 1, and then we can store the value of 5 in p of 1 like this. Simple as that. When using the new operator, the arrays are created on the free store. The free store is often called as heap or heap memory. In contrast to the static arrays, whose allocated memory is automatically deallocated after the program is terminated, the memory allocated by using new must be deleted by the user. That is, the user has the responsibility to free or erase the memory space. For that purpose, we use the operator called delete. We simply type delete with this operator and the name of the pointer and this statement will completely free the memory allocated during the statement p is new int 10. If we forget to free the memory, we might create a memory leak. The memory leak is a serious bug that can create an unstable system. And here is one final suggestion. Whenever you can, use smart pointers instead of operator new to allocate space. More about this in our future tutorials. Okay, let's start with coding. The first step is to open your favorite C++ editor. In my case, I'm using Visual Studio Code and G++ compiler. Let's create a new file. Click on File and click on New File. And over here, I will call the file as Test Dynamic. And don't forget the extension CPP and I will save this file. The purpose of this file will be, will be to demonstrate the basic usage of dynamic arrays. We will create a dynamic arrays on the basis of a sequence of numbers entered by the user. So let's start with coding. First of all, I need to include the necessary libraries. I will just need the input output stream. Then, to simplify my syntax, I will simply use using namespace std. Next, we need to define prototypes of two functions. The first function will be used to create our dynamic array, that is to read the values. And I'm going to call this function as createArray. And the input parameters of this function are array, this will be a pointer to our array and int size. This is the size of the array. The next function is to print our array. Consequently, I will call my function as print array. And again, over here, we need to specify two things. We need to specify the pointer to the array and the size of the array. Here is our main function. And over here, what I like to do, after prototypes, I will create empty functions. I will simply do this, and then later on, we will fill in these functions. That is, we will completely define them. Okay. And over here, to make a minimal code, return zero. Good. Over here, I will declare one integer variable storing the array size. Then I will declare another integer. However, this time it's going to be a pointer to the integer and I'm going to call it integer pointer. This pointer will store the base address of our dynamic array. That is, it's going to store the address of the first entry of a dynamically created array. So let's now ask a user to enter the size of the array. So let's ask this. Enter the size of the array. And let's not forget over here to use AND line to make the input to look nice. And over here we will use C in to read the input 
arrays size. Good. Now, on the basis of the entered array size, let's create our dynamic array. To do that, we need to type array pointer, and then look what I will write. I will write new int, and then I will just pass the array size. What will happen behind the scene is that a memory will be allocated on the heap or reserve and address to the first or the base address of that memory space will be returned and it will be stored in array pointer. And later on, we can access and change the variables in the dynamically created array. That is over here. We create a dynamic array of the size given by array size. This is very, very, very important. Next, we will simply call this function over here, create array, to fill in the entries of, a, of the array. And over here, I need to change several things. The first input argument or the input parameter will be our pointer, array pointer. And again, to summarize this, we just need to pass the pointer to the base address of our dynamic array. This is very important. We are never passing the complete array since this is not efficient, we are just passing the pointer. And the next thing we need to pass is a copy of our array size. And that's it. And after that, we simply need to call the function print array. And over here, again, we need to specify only the pointer and the size of the array. And after that, after we print the entries of the array, we simply delete delete our array like this, delete array pointer, and that's it. Next, let's define the two functions. Here, we need to ask our user to enter 10 numbers, and then we will store these numbers in our array. So let's do that. First of all, let's ask the question, or let's just give instruction, enter, and then let's specify over here size, then what we will do next, let's create something like this. Numbers separated by space and press enter. And over here, let's end the line to make a nice input statement. And over here, we need to use a for loop to read the entry. Over here, I need to declare an index and define it to be zero then index should be smaller than the size, then we need to increment the index, and what we will do over here, we will simply do this, C in array, and then we simply say index, and that's it. And finally, let's define our print array function. Over here, again, we need a loop, so let's define it, for int index goes from zero, index is smaller than size, and over here we do index, oops, let me just do this, index plus plus, and inside of our for loop, we will simply type C out, then this array of index, and let's then do something like this, empty space, and let's do semicolon, and let's use the final end line to clear everything and to start the new line. Okay, that's basically it. So here is our print function, here is the create array, and let's go back to the program and let's summarize it once again. This variable is used to store the array size. Here is our array pointer. Over here, we ask the user to enter the size of the array. We read the array size. Then we create a dynamic array of the size given by array size. We use new int, and new int will create, or better to say, a reserve, a memory space for storing 
integer array of the size array size and it's going to return the base address of this array and this base address will be stored in this pointer and over here we create the array inside of this create array function we read the entries specified by the user and we fill in the entries of our array and finally over here we print the array by calling this function and we free or we allocate the memory space and we end the program that's it and let's run this program i need to click over here to select my compiler and let's see okay you can see here the execution terminal enter the size of the array for example five and let's enter five numbers separated by space and press enter there is small type over here but don't worry about it so let's type for example four five six seven eight and are these five numbers one two three four five they are and once we press the enter we will go to the print array function and we will simply print the enter the numbers and here they are four five six seven and eight Next, let's modify this code by defining a function that will change the entries of the array. So I'm going to call this function as change array. And again, the parameters are the same. And let's define this function at the end over here. And let's do the following. So what will happen here? I'm going to, first of all, go over the entries of my array like this and then I'm going to simply double them so I will type array and then index will simply be our index is the previous value multiplied by 2 okay simple as that and let's now use this function in our main function let's just copy the name so what I will do over here I will click or basically type change array as the first parameter I'm going to specify my array pointer and the array size but before we do that we will type this I am changing I'm doubling the array elements so let's type this And over here, I will again print out the new elements, elements are. And then again, I will call my print function. That's it. Let's compile this and let's see what will happen. Hopefully there are no errors over here. Over here I forgot semicolon, so don't make this mistake. Make sure that everything is okay. And now let's run the program. So I will click here to run C or C++ file. Then I will compile this and let's see what will happen. Enter the size of the array. So let's do it. For example, let's enter four numbers and let's enter them. For example, two, minus two, four, and minus four. And then let's press enter. We can see that the entries are actually doubled as we expected. And this is very, very important and interesting demonstration of dynamic arrays. Okay, that's all for today and th thanks for watching.